So this month we're going to talk about online productivity. So basically, what do you do online and are there ways you can be more productive with what you do? Specifically with using things like RSS feeds. So if you don't know what RSS feeds are, then this video is for you. So first let's talk about how people spend their time online. So 2013 is going to be the first year that digital use is going to surpass television use. And what digital use means is that means the time you spend online, which could include computers, it could include desktops, it could include tablets, your mobile device. So all the different ways you spend your time online. You can see that in 2013, the average is going to be over five hours per day. Now, to me, that doesn't sound like that much just because at work, I spend a lot of time online. So you may not spend as much time online um, as me, um, but it doesn't surprise me that the average is five hours because that seems actually low for me. Um, so there are a lot of people like me who do spend time online for work as well. So digital is going to surpass television. So this will be the first time that this has happened. Um, and you also need to think about too that a lot of people multitask. As you can see at the bottom of this chart, it says the time spent with each medium includes all time spent with that medium, regardless of multitasking. So one hour of multitasking online while watching TV counts for one hour of TV and one hour of online. So keep that in mind. I know it looks like a lot of time when you see five hours of digital and four hours of television, but a lot of those hours for some people are going to overlap. So here are charts about the idea of using multiple things at once. So this is simultaneous use of a smartphone while watching television. And this statistic is from about a year ago, so this could be more as well. You'll see multiple countries here. The US is in blue. Um, so you'll see several times a day, 27% of people say they use their smartphone while they're on or while they're watching television. Um, and you can actually see um, several times a day, once a day, or several times a week constitutes more than 60% of people say they do this. So we are using multiple devices at the same time. So that's for smartphones. This is for tablets. And it's pretty much the same percentages, a little bit more with tablets actually. And again, this is a year ago, so it might be a little bit larger than this by now too. But people are using things at the same time. So when they're using things at the same time, what kind of things are people doing online? So this is part of a larger infographic. Um, I have this infographic linked in the Milli Wiki under October. Um, all the things that are on this presentation are linked in the Milli Wiki. So don't feel like you have to scramble and write down these URLs. Just go to October and you can find them. And this is part of a um, larger infographic called How People Spend Their Time Online. And this really shows that you know, the largest thing we do is social networking, 22%. So that's things like you know, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram can even be included there, Pinterest possibly too. Um, those are the different websites where we share content with a group of friends. Um, so we do a lot of social networking, this is true. But the next one is 21% is searches. So hopefully last month you learned more about some Google search tips that will maybe help you lessen the time you do searches. It'll hopefully help you find what you need quicker. Um, and then the next one is 20% is reading content. And that's really what we're going to talk about this month. Um, we do look at a lot of different things online when we're reading content. Um, we go to blogs, we go to websites, we go to newspaper sites. There's many different places where we read content. So we can try to help you with your time, with the amount of time you spend reading content by using things like RSS feeds. So before I talk about RSS feeds, I want you just to think about how many sites do you visit to view content? So think about daily or weekly. How many different places do you go to view content? Do you go to news sites, newspapers, magazines? Do you read blogs? Do you go to video sites in YouTube? Are you following, um, do you follow different channels in YouTube, different people? Are you going to just websites for things like book reviews or product reviews? There's a lot of stuff out there and whatever your passion is, you probably are looking at websites for that passion. So just think about all the different sites that you go to to view content. 
When it comes to RSS feeds, you can actually save a lot of time by subscribing to RSS feeds instead of visiting all of those websites. So now comes what are RSS feeds. I will say those, all these icons, I have them here for a reason. This is the icon for RSS feeds, or these are the many different types of icons you can see for RSS feeds. When you're on a website, this is the type of icon you want to look for. And you can see it comes in multiple different ways. Often it'll just be, um, it'll just say RSS and subscribe, but otherwise it'll look just like this icon. This orange one is the most common, but sometimes you can see they take the um, information from the center of the icon, it kind of looks like a, a, a radio beacon symbol or something like that, and they'll place it in other, on other icons. So that's what you look for when you're looking for an RSS feed. So RSS, what it is, it stands for Really Simple Syndication. What that means is that it's a way for information to go to you instead of you going to get the information. So instead of you going to five websites to get your news, you can have those five websites send you information. Because every time you go to those websites and they don't have anything new, you wasted your time going there. So instead of doing that, subscribe to the RSS feed and they will send you new content. Here's a chart that kind of explains it. Um, this is linked in the wiki again, and I'm going to break apart this chart and show you the top and bottom. So the top of the chart, this talks about without RSS feeds, and this is the old way of doing things. This, this means that you have to go to all those different websites. So you can see there's three different websites this person visits, and that person goes to three different websites to try to read content. And every time he goes there to try to get the content from that site and there's nothing new, that's kind of a waste of time. So this is the old way. It has a, a turtle there showing you that he has to go to three different sites to check to see if there's anything new. Now the bottom of that little graphic, this shows the faster way. It shows those three websites and all three of them have an RSS icon. What this person needs to do then is to subscribe to something called an RSS reader. A reader is something that can store all of your RSS feeds. So he subscribed to an RSS reader and then he subscribed to all of those, those three different websites, he subscribed to their RSS feeds. So now he doesn't have to go to those three websites. When they publish new content, it comes to his RSS reader. So he just has to open his RSS reader and not those three websites. So he's down to one website that he opens now to see if there's new content on three websites. This is what RSS feeds do. You go to the websites that you typ typically frequent, the ones that update content regularly, and you look and see if they have an RSS feed. You can then add that feed to your RSS reader, and that's how you can view new content. You don't have to go back to their website, but you just open up your reader. If you need more of an explanation on RSS feeds, there's a video I posted um, under October. I just posted a link to it called RSS in Plain English. And you might want to watch that video. It gives you a really nice to follow, easy to watch um, kind of definition of what RSS feeds are. So I suggest watching that and you can see the video was made in 2007. So it's a little bit older, but it still explains RSS feeds in a nice way. And as you can see, RSS feeds have been around for a while, but not everyone utilizes them. So if you need an, uh, a better definition, one that you can see more information about RSS feeds, I highly suggest you watch that video. So now I wanna just tell you of different places where you can find RSS feeds. Cause now that you know what they are, you actually can see RSS feeds in many, many different places. So what about our local newspaper, the Pioneer Press? Yes, they have a lot of RSS feeds. What you do is you go to the Pioneer Press homepage and you scroll way to the bottom of the homepage. And then you'll see what it, that tiny box I have on the left. The very bottom of the page, you'll see it says TwinCities.com, and it has their Facebook icon, Twitter, Google+, and then the RSS icon. 
So you'll see this at the very bottom of the Pioneer Press page. If you click on the RSS icon, then you'll see this page that shows all the RSS feeds that they have. And this is only the top of the page. This is actually a long page because you don't have to subscribe to RSS feeds for the whole entire paper. You can just subscribe to RSS feeds for certain sections that you're interested in. So if you're interested in just the local news, you can subscribe to just the RSS feeds from the local news. And their RSS, um, it just is an RSS little orange button that you click on to subscribe. So when you go to a newspaper's website, look and see if they have RSS feeds. Now, the reason I use Pioneer Press over Star Tribune is that, um, I don't know if you're aware or not, but if you are not a Star Tribune subscriber, if you're reading the Star Tribune online, you're only limited to, or you are limited to, 10 articles per month that you can read for free. So I didn't put them here. The Star Tribune does have a lot of RSS feeds, but I didn't use that as an example just because of that 10, um, 10 article limit. It's 10 per device, so I read the Star Tribune on a computer, a tablet, and a phone, so I look at it as I have 30 different articles to read. Um, however, uh, that is something with the Star Tribune that I didn't want to talk about their RSS feeds, though you certainly can, can subscribe to them as well. But it's more than just our local papers. Um, almost every news site, especially larger news sites, will have RSS feeds. So there we have Min Post on the left. You might read that local um, uh, website. And they have RSS feeds for all the different sections of their website as well. So you could subscribe to just the education one or just the arts and culture one. And then you can see national websites, national news sites also have RSS feeds like CNN, Fox News, the Huffington Post. When you go to a website to find their RSS feed, you typically want to look on the left or right column. And it's usually not at the top of the column. You sometimes have to scroll down the column and you want to look for something that says RSS or um, subscribe or feeds, something like that. It's typically on the left or right column or it's way at the very bottom of the page like it is for the Pioneer Press. Um, and so for all of these sites, I found their RSS feed linked to the bottom or on the side, except when it was for Fox News. I don't think I noticed it on the side of it. Um, or on the bottom. I could have just um, missed it as well. But to find that one, I just Googled Fox News RSS. So I did a Google search for Fox News RSS, and the first result was their RSS page. So that's another thing you can do. If you cannot find the RSS feed on a website you're interested in, Google the name of the website along with RSS to see if you can find their page. But as you can see with all these pages, they have many RSS feeds because they produce a lot of content. So you can just subscribe to the RSS feeds that are of interest to you. You can also subscribe to RSS feeds on video sites. So this is YouTube. This is actually the TED Ed channel in YouTube. Um, you may be familiar with TED. Um, TED Talks are really kind of thought-provoking talks about a variety of subjects, but TED Talks have gotten so much bigger now. Um, there's so many different versions of TED Talks. And this is TED Ed. This is the TED Ed YouTube channel where they post talks about so many different things. And I say the word thing because I've seen things here on science and math and history. and It's, it's any different topic you can think about um, related to education in some way. So the TED Ed channel is a channel that I like to subscribe to. And you can actually get an RSS feed. So I don't have to go to YouTube to see if TED Ed has something new, but instead I can subscribe to their feed. And so when they post a new video, I am alerted of the new video in my feed reader. And then of course there's blogs. I actually, most blogs have an RSS feed. Um, some people with smaller blogs, they may not um, have a feed kind of set up for their blog, but typically blogging platforms just automatically set them up too, so they may have a feed and not even know it. Um, but most blogs, you're going to find a link to their RSS feed on the blog itself. 
Uh, here's a blog that I recommend everyone follow, Free Technology for Teachers. This is by Richard Byrne. Um, he used to be a teacher uh, in the classroom, then left the classroom and did a lot of speaking engagements, and now I think he's going back into the classroom. But what's so great about his blog is he talks about technology and how it could be used in the classroom, and then he always gives ideas on either how he has used it or how he's seen someone else use it. Uh, it's a really, really great blog, and it's, it's nice, too, because his posts are pretty short. He doesn't go on and on about something, but he just gets right to the point about what the tool is and how you could start using it in the classroom. So if you want to learn more about technology use in the classroom, he's a great blogger to follow. And you can see at the top of his page, he has all the different places where you can follow him, including the RSS button for his um, RSS feed. So when he posts a new blog post, it will go to your feed reader instead of you having to come to his blog to find it. And he posts probably three to four blogs a week, I'd say. So he posts a lot of good information. And I don't want to miss that information, so um, I, I subscribe to it in my feed reader so that I can get um, new content from him. Now, once you know what RSS feeds are, you're going to start seeing them everywhere. Um, this is actually the bottom of an Amazon page. So I was looking at the best sellers, the best sellers in books from Amazon, and at the very bottom there's an RSS feed I can subscribe to. So when they add a new bestseller to this list, I would get alerted about it. Now this might not be something you're interested in, but I just wanted to show that you can even find RSS feeds on places where you are trying to um, look for something to purchase. Um, this type of thing could be interesting to media specialists who are purchasing new books for the library, um, things like that. Uh, where there's websites where you purchase new things, you may find an RSS feed there. Not every website, but I'm just kind of always surprised, even on clothing websites that I like to um, purchase from, I have seen RSS feeds there as well. So I suppose it makes sense for the business to try to send you new content when they have it so you can purchase it. But I just wanted to point out that there are RSS feeds in many different places. So you can subscribe to as many or as few as you want, but this is one place where you could get more. And you all have an RSS feed on your blog. So when you go to the Millie Ning, you can subscribe to a blogger's RSS feeds. So here's Nathan's page. And if you're on a certain person's page and you want to see where their RSS feed is, you want to click on the link for their blog posts, which is always below their picture. So if you click on blog posts, you'll then see all the posts that Nathan has done, and you scroll way to the bottom of his posts, and that's where you can see his RSS feed. Now, to find someone in the name, what you want to do is you want to click on where it says Members, and then you, there's a search bar and you can just search for someone's name. Then just click on their name when you find them, and that will bring the, you to their page like this. So then you click on their blog posts, you go to their blog, and you scroll down for their RSS button. Now you might find it valuable to follow some bloggers in the Ning, because I know some of you are in the same school building, but you might not see each other every single day, so you could subscribe to those people who are in Millie that are from your same building. Or I know some of you signed up in research groups, so you could, I know in Minneapolis some of you signed up in research groups. So for those of you in the same research group, you could follow each other, so you um, won't miss any blog posts. So that is how you find the RSS feed for a blogger in the Ning. Now I will say RSS feeds are not on every website. They're typically on websites that frequently update content. So, you know, think of news websites, blog websites, things like that. Those sites are typically updating content regularly, and that's where you'll find an RSS feed. Now, the reason I say this is because I've had in the past teachers go to websites like this, the National Council of Teachers for English, and they get upset because there is no RSS feed here. Now I want you to think about this website for a second because this website is just here to give you information about the National Council of Teachers of English. They don't continually update the content that's at least on this home page. 
um, this page is all about finding information about this organization. So it's not a website that's going to typically have a lot of updated information. However, within their website there might be RSS feeds on certain pages. For instance, they publish books. So on their books page you can see there's an RSS link because when they this is this content is regularly updated with new books that they publish so you can subscribe to the RSS feed to see about new books back on their home page I can see another place that might have an RSS feed is like their calendar if you went to their calendar there might be an RSS feed there because that is content that is frequently updated Another thing that does have content that's frequently updated are things like their Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn pages. And you can subscribe to someone's RSS feed in Twitter without even being a member of Twitter. So if you did not want to join Twitter, but you wanted to see what content they were putting out on Twitter, you can actually subscribe to their Twitter feed without even having an account in Twitter. So that's another way to get RSS feeds too. But I just wanted to put this out there because I want you to don't get upset when you find a website that has no RSS feeds because I want you to think about the website you're looking at. Is it a website where you go to find new content all the time? If it's not a website you go to for new content but just content about an organization, then it might not have an RSS feed. But think about if it has like a blog on the National Council of Teachers of English, maybe there's a blog on one of these pages and their blog probably has an RSS feed as well. So think about the website that you're looking at and what content they would update and that's where you would look for an RSS feed. Now when we meet, you're going to learn about Flipboard. Flipboard is going to be the tool that I will show you that can collect all of your RSS feeds. So you'll use Flipboard to subscribe to your RSS feeds so you can view the content. Now Flipboard is really cool in that it makes the content look like a magazine. So this is what Flipboard will look like. I have my Twitter account connected to Flipboard. So what this has done is it has taken tweets of people that I follow and it has put them in this magazine format. And what's so cool about, I think, using Twitter with Flipboard is that you can see it's not showing me the tweet that the person said, but it's showing me the article that they linked out to. So I think that's kind of great, is that it will follow people in my Twitter account, and when they link to a really good article, it doesn't say what they said about the article, but it pulls in the article and puts it in magazine format. Or, here's what free technology for teachers looks like in Flipboard. So that's the blog I recommended you follow earlier, and um, you can see it has his blog posts, and it makes everything look like a nice magazine format. And with Flipboard, I will show you when we meet, you do just turn the pages like you would turn the pages of a magazine. So it really is your own personal magazine. And you can also subscribe to video channels. So here's that TED Ed YouTube channel, and I subscribed in Flipboard. So when they have a new video, the videos appear like this to me. And I can actually watch the video within Flipboard as well. So I don't ever have to leave Flipboard to watch the video either. So instead of me going to those different websites, I can now just open Flipboard and all the content from those websites can come to me. So I'll show you how to use Flipboard um, and I'll give you examples of a lot of different things you can follow. Um, but it's a really interesting tool because it is your own, they call themselves your personal magazine. So when we meet, um, I'll go over suggested blogs or websites you may want to follow. I'll show you how to use Flipboard to follow them. And then if you, um, before we meet, if you want to learn more about RSS feeds or Flipboard, check out all the other information under October in the Millie Wiki. And I also want you to think about when you come to, or before you come, think about websites that you frequent that update content. So come with some websites in mind that you might want to follow as well. Um, and then we will talk about how to follow them in Flipboard.